you know, we have all this talk about the offense. Offense this, offense that. We're here to do something about that, are we not, Lisa Matthews? Let's talk some defense. Absolutely. Ready. Paul Calvisi here and the defensive coordinator right there, Vance Joseph. Welcome to the Cardinals Coaches Chronicles podcast. How are we thanks, doing, by the thanks way? Thanks for having me, guys. I'm fine. Look how laid I'm back fine. and comfy you look. <laughs> Absolutely. Make yourselves at home. <laughs> Always laid back. <laughs> Always. Uh, give us your thoughts here now that you've had a full team or at least close to it, veterans and rookies, and you're literally off the field and out of the meeting rooms, right. I mean, just moments ago. So give us some first impressions on your defense here 2019. Well, so far, so good. You know, it's early. You know, we put in our first two installs the first two days. So it was a couple mistakes here and there, but the effort's good. You know, we have a, we have a veteran uh, group, you know, that uh, wants to be good on defense. So it's fun to coach this group. A lot of talks always about the transition between a 4-3 to a 3-4. Just how are they transitioning back right. to a three-four? I think uh, it's going well. You know, that's 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 very o overrated in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, being a four-three team, it affects your first, second down. But you know, we are four-three on third downs and sub. So, right. um, you know, being a three-four team is always fun because you get to uh, dictate the uh, matchups on pass rush. You know, we have two great rushers and Suggs and and Chandler Jones. So. It's, it's going to be fun getting those guys going on one-on-ones in pass rush. All right, so we're talking impact. Let's just get out of the way because we know the news. Patrick Peterson, six-game suspension. Right. How does that impact the Cardinals' defense going forward? Well, it, it has an impact. It's, I mean, he's a, he's a great player, you know, but we do have guys in the back end that uh, played a bunch of ball. So I'm excited to watch Alfred and Tremaine Brock and, and David Amerson, who's all three are veteran corners. So obviously not having your best players – that's going to affect you in some way, you know. And I mean, he's 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 a he's a top five or top ten corner in this league. He's been a Pro Bowler for the last seven eight years, so that makes a difference. But we have to move on. We're going to support Pat P, but we have three or four guys that's ready to play, you've including Murphy, right. you know, who we drafted in the uh, second round. So mm -hmm. we're excited about him also. Yeah, you've talked a lot about this defense this off season about. You know, winning on first downs, dictating defense, having those two pass rushers and two cover corners. Do you feel like you have to change anything schematically when looking at the guys you have on the roster, maybe moving Murphy inside, or how do you kind of look at this roster right we, now and see? We don't. You know, we're going to stick with our plan. You know, we have a plan to dictate on first down, and that's obviously rushing five guys and playing man coverage. We have guys who are capable. You know, we have great rushers. We have great cover corners. So, the plan won't change. Obviously, every every game plan you have is different, but our 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 mindset won't change. We want to dictate on first, second down, and obviously win on third down. Robert Alford, give us a couple of thoughts there. What have you seen from him? Uh, you know, Emerson. Uh, you know, obviously some of these vets, Tremaine Brock, who you've had you before. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. I mean, I mean, in this league, you need three solid, dependable corners, don't you? You need four, probably. You know, and Alford's a guy that's. Uh, that's been a good player for a long time, and he's excited to be here. He's still young. He's in great shape. He's very, very competitive. So he's, he's here to reprove himself, you know, so to speak. So he's excited to be opposite of Pat P when Pat P's back. So he knows being opposite of Pat P, that's a, that's, that's a pressure-packed position because of, of the work he's going to get. Sure. So, but he's excited about that. Tremaine Brock's a player that I've had twice now, once in San Fran as a rookie in once in Denver as a veteran player, and he's always a guy that plays well. You know, he's he's never a guy we talk about, but on game day, he's a guy that's making plays all the time. You know, obviously, uh, Emerson's a high pick who's who's played good football. He's a long corner. He's experienced, and he's tough and competitive. And Murphy is a young kid who uh, who wants to be good also. So, I'm very comfortable right now with our four or five corners we have in the in the program. We're used to trying to see who will be opposite of Patrick Peterson, who can step up to the plate. Now it's things changed, obviously, but right. what do you need to see from Byron Murphy to have that confidence to play him opposite of Robert, right. if that's an option that's, that's day a, one? That's, that's a tall order for a rookie, but right. um, you know, he's up for it. I mean, he's he's a very very smart player. You know, right now we have you know about four or five installs in, which probably you know sixty five or seventy calls right now. So. He's playing nickel. He's playing a single safety force. He's playing corner. So right now, it's, it's a little much for him. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, he's a, he's a worker. He's smart, and he wants to be good, and that's important. So he's working every day to be the best player he can be. Does that help initially as a rookie just to throw everything at him at once, playing nickel, playing slot? Mm -hmm. 
rather than focus on one. Absolutely, because in the spring right now, it's 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 your major install. You know, so in the spring you give them everything. You know, so in the fall you kind of scrim it down so guys can play faster. But right now we're putting the whole defense in, so he has to learn it now or later. Mm-hmm. So it's it's better now or later for him. Mm-hmm. So once he learns it, he'll become more comfortable and he'll play good for us. But our entire defense right now is kind of going through that, you know, figuring out uh, what to do and how to do it. So it's a lot of defense in right now, but we need those bullets to win games in the fall. So we put them in in the spring. On offense, you see Cliff Kingsbury with Kyler Murray. Is that akin to you with Jordan Hicks, your middle linebacker? Do you have to develop a, develop a similar type of relationship and communication channel with your middle linebacker? Absolutely. I mean, he's he is my voice on the field. I mean, he's a very, very bright guy, so – I'm happy we've got him because I mean he's he's a young player also when healthy he's he's a really really good player so he's been impressive I mean as far as how much he can retain and process you know on on every play he's getting guys lined up he makes every call for us, so he's definitely a good get for us how does that just help a guy like Hassan Reddick who's still developing as a player and coming into form Hassan's been very impressive as far as knowing what to do I mean he is he's obviously a physical uh physical uh freak as far as movement and running and hitting and those things but his football IQ has gotten so much better in the last three or four months so I'm excited to watch him play I mean his 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 better years are ahead of him and you can see it happening right now speaking of physical a lot of us remember DJ Swearinger it wasn't too long ago and you think of DJ <laughs> right. and, and you think of setting the tone how critical is that to any defense and, and how big a part is DJ going to be of this defense he's going to be a huge part of it you know one thing DJ is he's a he loves football, you know, so he knows what to do. He can unwind the defenses for us. So outside of being a guy who sets a tone for us, he's also the quarterback of the back end. So he's a very, very, very intelligent football player. Obviously, it gets, it, it gets overlooked by his sometimes his uh, emotional outbursts. <laughs> But as far as a football IQ, it's, a, it's it's very very high. But you want a little contained. But you want a little bit of that that dog that fire. Absolutely, in them. it's a it's a physical game. So you have to have guys like DJ who's setting the tone for you. He keeps everybody playing fast and playing physical. So Terrell absolutely, Suggs. I mean, you want you want absolutely Suggs, Suggs, uh, Swearinger. I mean, mm-hmm. both of those guys are tone setters. So you want those guys to be a part of your team. I think I was the guy who asked you earlier. We had you on the Big Red Rage. I'll ask it again. You'll probably get it all season long. Chandler Jones versus Von Miller. Are, 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 are there similarities? Is there is there one or two things in common that every great pass rusher has? What have yeah. you found with Chandler so far? Well, Chandler's been a great rusher for a long time. I mean, he's averaged 10 plus sacks for the last seven years, I think. Mm-hmm. So is Von. They're so different. You know, one's one's a six foot five guy, very long arms, uh, you know, long, long get off, and Von's a uh, undersized more compact you know more explosive rushers so they're so different but they're both productive and obviously in this defense having having great rushers is uh is premium why or how can he be more effective standing back up i think for you know for most rushers okay when you're in a two-point stance it gives the offensive tackle kind of anxiety every play because i mean he's not sure where you're going and from a from a three-point to get to a rush position, you have to actually stand up a little bit, you know. But from a two point, you're already in your rush stance, so you're taking the middleman out. Okay, you're in the two point stance, so you're already bent and ready to go. So your get off becomes faster. Your hand placement is obviously quicker because your hands are off the ground. So I think overall, most rushers enjoy being the two point stance versus the three point stance, and it keeps your eyes keeps your eyes high, so you can see the quarterback easier also. So it it's worked for me in my career as a coordinator. <laughs> we can't let you go without a first impression of the first pick overall. What have you seen out of Kyler Murray? He can throw the ball. You know, he's he's obviously a special talent. He's he's got rare rare foot speed, you know. So as as a defensive coordinator playing against this guy, you know, you know man coverage is going to be a problem because if you play man and it, and everyone's back's turned, he takes off and runs, no one's accounted for him. It can be a 50, 60 yard gain. So He's going to force teams to play very vanilla and play certain types of defenses because if you do play man and he breaks out of the pocket, no one's accounted for him. That's a, that's a big play. Obviously, the zone read aspect is going to be tough too, but he is definitely a special athlete and a special pass for the football. What about, is there a Patrick Mahomes to him, the baseball background, the arm angles? You went against Mahomes twice yes. last year. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you see any commonalities there at all? It's early on, you know, yeah. I, you know. I can't see that much right now, but it's early. But he's obviously he can throw the football. It's off of his hand, really, really fast and really quick. 
We have a question from a fan. Sure. They want to know who's someone to keep our eyes on during OTA's training camp. Let's see. Let's see. Anyone off the radar? Is there a yeah. young guy? Is there sort of an unknown? I, I know number 39, Tyler Sigler, yeah. this kid out of Wheaton <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Just the fact Absolutely. he got signed, that was yeah. sort of an underdog story, right? He's a good athlete, and he's working to be a good player. But I think a guy that's going to be a guy that's going to be a real guy is uh, Gordak. I mean, he is he is he is a six foot two guy who runs four or five. He has heavy hands. He can rush, and he's uh, he's a young backer. So uh, hopefully, he can continue to grow and be a good player for us. Dennis Gardeck, yeah. Wolf nicknamed him Gardeck the Barbarian. The barbarian. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, that's not bad. That's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> that's fitting. And, and last question: your yeah. your head coaching experience that you've had. How much does that come into play with the Cardinals' new head coach, Cliff Kingsbury? Have, have you guys had you know various conversations? All right, anticipate this. Maybe look out mm-hmm. for that. Vice versa, do you guys you guys have that, that Absolute, channel? Absolutely. We talk all the time about practice and about different things, you know, when it comes to the football team. But he's the head coach. You know, I mean, he's experienced. I mean, he's been head coach for, what, six, six plus years in college. And that's a, that's a huge job. You know, obviously the pro job's a big job. But the college jobs are, are, are huge because of the uh, kids and the, the school part and the recruiting part. So mm-hmm. he's coming from a background where the job is huge. This job's huge also, and it's – it's really based on wins and losses, and that's it. That's what matters. So, uh, but as far as experience of being head coach, he's he's been there before. But if he, if he has questions, he, he can find me. I'm two doors down. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. And you're enjoying the weather, I bet. You know, the, we, we, yeah, we made a few oh, phone yes. calls. The big heat, you know, for the new it's staff in town. It's been we're, nice. We're easing you guys into it. Yeah, been nice. There you go, Vance Thank Joseph. Us. Everyone, thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. There you go, Cardinals coaches chronicle podcast here. Thanks to the defensive coordinator, Vance Joseph, today.